First thing I gotta get out of the way before I get on with the review is the fact that a couple of days ago my mic dropped on the floor and it kind of got busted up so I don't know how the sound quality is going to be for this, if it's going to even work at all, so if you guys run into any problems while the recording is going on like the sound breaking off or something not going through properly please tell me in the comments so I can know whether or not am I gonna buy a new mic or I'm just gonna stick with this one for the time being alright now that that's out of the way let us begin with The Walking Dead season 2 the video game all that remains episode 1 now this episode is kind of like the perfect continuation of what happened to Clementine. It has a big what the fuck kind of opening and we see how Clementine has evolved in the two years that have passed since uh, she was forced to either leave Lee behind in Savannah or in my case shoot him in the head so that he couldn't reanimate. And uh, when I say two years, I literally mean two years. Um, the beginning part, which lasts about a good two or three minutes, um, is about a few months after that because Krista is already heavily pregnant at this point and then we get a jump um, about 16 months later so anywhere between 18 months to two years or maybe even more is very very likely and what's great about this episode is that we see how Clementine has evolved like when we first met her she was this really shy girl who really didn't know how the world had just gone to shit essentially basically every other ordinary person on the planet and after spending well over two and a half years surviving in this world you know taking into account all the months they spent at the motor inn with the original group you know with kenny lee and all those other guys she has been living in this kind of world for at least two and a half years if not more at this point and what's great about this episode is that while she is still a child and she still has that kind of innocence or rather she has that innocence depending on how you kind of um have her interact with these new group of people because in a lot of the dialogue options you can kind of make her seem as kind of like this cold kind of distant person you know in a kind of a kid way and um, it, it, it was one of the big concerns I had going into this season because I thought that because Lee was kind of a blank slate for the most part you could really make him any personality you wanted to and in this you kind of get to see how Clementine learns from Lee's actions. Is she going to be a, as compassionate as Lee was if you played him as a compassionate guy, or if, he's, or if she's going to be as, as kind of a hard ass as he was if you played him as a hard ass in season one, or is it going to be kind of the opposite? Like, is she going to um, detest Lee for kind of being a hard ass, and she's going to try to be different from him, or she's going to detest him for being compassionate, she's going to be different from the compassionate Lee, and it's kind of like these kind of personality choices that are up to you, and it's a kind of the most natural way I feel they could have possibly done this kind of thing, because Clementine is an already established character who's gone through a lot of different stuff, and that's easily the best part of this episode. You kind of see her change. Like, at the beginning part, she's still kind of like a kid. But then after the 16-month time skip, you get this great shot of her face. And she looks al almost unrecognizable from the Clementine of before. She's not smiling. You can see that she's become more hardened. And this is shown throughout the rest of the episode where she's become this survivalist. She's not just some innocent kid who doesn't know even how to shoot a gun. She knows how to stitch herself up. She knows how to kill zombies. And she has no qualms about killing another human being in self-defense and throughout the whole episode i was just telling myself my god this is what clementine became like holy shit and there were just so many times where you're forced to do stuff as clementine or you, where you can do stuff as clementine and you just say holy shit the old clem never would have done that but this is new survivalist clem and she is willing to do the, well, mostly whenever it takes in self-defense. Like, if a human tries to attack her, she will not hesitate to bite the dude's thumb off, to lure him to a bunch of zombies and get him eaten, or stab him in the shoulder with a, with a piece of stick or something. And it's like this... This is easily the best part of the episode, along with the choices of how pers how of how Lee's actions affected Clementine, and it feels kind of in a really natural way. Just it's like just because your parents were say greedy assholes doesn't mean you you're gonna grow up to be a greedy asshole yourself. You might, but you might not. And it's kind of like the same thing that happens here, and it's all really up 
left up to the player. And it's kind of weird to play a kid in this, and I love that the game plays this up in, in its gameplay mechanics. Like, there are several places Clem can't reach, or several things she can't do as well as an adult because she's like an 11 or 12 year old kid. And she doesn't have the, you know, the physique of Lee. And, you know, Lee, you know, despite not being a really a fighter, he was still, you know, a man in his prime or a little bit past his prime, like in his 40s or something. And he could still take himself, protect himself, you know, as well as any other guy. Clementine really can't do that. She has to rely on her small size, her speed, and her agility to defend herself. And if she gets grappled by a zombie, it's a pretty bad situation for her. Unlike Lee, who could get grappled by a zombie but he could still use his brute strength to get through it. Clem can't really do that. And it's really interesting to see how she is going to interact with this new group of people. Because with Lee, you were kind of put into the leader position. With Clementine, you really can't do that because it would just seem kind of ridiculous if a kid took the leadership position. And uh, maybe, they, maybe they can pull that off and make it work. I don't know. Um, but yeah, her being playing as Clementine does get kind of played up with the storyline, and you know, they do acknowledge her, they do treat her differently than they would, you know, a, a, you know, a grown man, or say, if, if, if Lee was in this kind of position, and, and the, and the way Cle Lee's actions affect Clementine's personality after her being, you know, surviving, you know, in the wilderness all this time, it, it's, it really is the big, it really is the biggest choice you make in this entire episode. The rest of the episode doesn't have that many story-altering decisions, and they're, 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 all of them pretty much are kind of a reflection of how Clementine is. There is this one point where a guy is kind of like wounded and he needs some water and you can choose you know to refuse him water and let him die or you can like give him water and this is kind of like an extension of what i talked about before where clementine's personality is altered by the way lee treated her is she going to be like him is she not going to be like him and it's and, and all and most of the decisions in this episode are kind of an extension of this and this episode is just f filled with big what the fuck moments it, just with Clementine, how much she's changed, how much she's, what she's willing to do, you know, to survive, how much hardened she's become, and, but she hasn't completely lost her innocence, she still has some of old Clem left in her, but a lot of it has to have been taken away because of the world she's lived in, and like I said, easily the best part of the episode, I have to say that this, this the second season looks significantly better than the old one. The old one suffered from frequent graphical problems, low textures, and issues like these that really kind of took me out of the experience. And, you know, the transition from scene to scene could be really really rough it really wouldn't feel natural and would kind of break the flow of the action and it just didn't work right here um like in the wolf among us they have significantly improved um they've significantly improved the graphics the graphics look leaps and bounds better than before the low res textures and the ryu zombie models have all been you know kind of taken away the zombies look way better now um there is none of that jagged transition problems from scene to scene or during the action sequences the user interface feels a lot cleaner this time around and all and just in general this season is a vast improvement in terms of graphical fidelity performance and just all around presentation over the last um season uh, for those of you wondering how 400 days plays into this it really doesn't for now but I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of this season, or at the middle part of the season, or maybe even as soon as next episode, we get to see some of the cast from 400 Days showing up. And to put all your fears aside, yes, this season does indeed take all of your saves from the first five episodes, including 400, 400 Days, and all of your choices are shown in like this brief, you know, kind of summary like this Watchmen style kind of summary where you get to see, you know, some of the key decisions, some of your key character interaction. And it's basically kind of like this small summary for those who may may have forgotten or they just need to be kind of reminded or they're just new players getting into the storyline. And I really like that they were able to implement this successfully. I found no issues with getting my saves to work. It's it it's it's basically, you know, the Mass Effect thing where you're where the choices from the previous game get, get transitioned into this one. 
And all around, if you're someone who played the first season and 400 days later, um, you're gonna you're gonna get the full experience here because you're gonna have the uh, the whole emotional connection, and you're gonna know how how Clementine has got to this point, how much she's changed from where she was before. And players who are just starting out with season two and they're skipping season one or four four hundred days, they're gonna kind of be left out of all this stuff, and they're not gonna get the full experience. This is really something that, if you pay, if you played the past games, this episode is going to be much stronger for you. If you're someone who's just starting out here, the episode is gonna be kind of f for you. And the episode itself is just kind of showing us how Clem has evolved and how she's dealing with this new group of people. Um. The group seems fairly interesting uh, so far. You already have some of the characters you like. A lot of them kind of feel already kind of three-dimensional, even though we don't get to spend as much time with them. And there's a good reason for that, you know, story-wise why we don't. And um, I hope they don't redo the same thing where the group kind of starts off good and then they just keep dying and dying and dying and then Clem gets left alone again or something. Because that would just be a complete copy-paste of what happened before. Um, but yeah, like I said, a, a lot of the problems from the previous season, you know, in terms of gameplay and in terms of... Um, in terms of presentation, you know, some of the performance issues, that's all been ironed out. I feel this is like the most ah. natural way they could have done the second season of The Walking Dead. And overall, I highly recommend this. I think that if you're someone who loved the first season, you're not, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna enjoy this episode. My only real complaint with it is that it doesn't really set up what happens later on. And at this point, it kind of feels kind of aimless. It just feels like stuff is happening, but there is really no central kind of storyline that kind of ties all this stuff together. And it does get hinted at towards the end of the episode and the small preview for the next episode that's going to come in a month or two. I think Wolf Among Us Episode 2 is going to come out bef after this, and then we're going to get Walking Dead Season 2 Episode 2 after that. So that's how they're going to transition between that. It's going to be Wolf Among Us one month and Walking Dead Season 2 the next. Um, but yeah, like I said, the only problem is it kind of feels aimless at this point. Um, but this whole issue could be rendered moot by the next episode, and it probably will if the setup at the climax of this one is any indication. And yeah, I highly recommend you guys check this episode out. If you're a fan of The Walking Dead Season 1 and 400 Days Later, you're gonna love this regardless. And if you're, if you're a newcomer to the series, I highly recommend you check out Season 1 before this because you're not going to get the full experience of this episode, you know, emotionally, that you would if you played Season 1.